Hey guys, so today we're gonna be installing the new Transplate harness from DiveRite. Uh, so, a few changes on the Transplate harness. Um, first noticeable notable thing here is that it's already assembled, which is just gonna make installation so much quicker. Uh, second thing is they have changed the transition plate uh, on the harness and it is no longer connected uh, to the other, uh, the other shoulder piece. So install is really easy. Um, dive right kind of outdid themselves again in, in making our lives easy as divers to get our gear assembled. So I'm gonna start with the left shoulder assembly, which I know because it has the epaulette. And I'm just gonna pass it through. Generally, we're leaving ourselves about three fingers worth away from the plate. And then I'm feeding it through top section. And then you're gonna just pass the remainder through the shoulder pad. Did a nice job sewing these on real tight. Sometimes a little pair of needle nose becomes your best friend with this kind of stuff. Okay, happy there. Of course you can trim off the excess when you know everything's right. Moving over to the right shoulder. So, you know, they come in a small, medium, large, extra large, double extra large. You know, by taking away this shoulder space really is just dropping me down to the next size. By cheating it out and giving myself a little bit of excess, maybe more than that three inch thing, um, it's just gonna go ahead and increase the size of it. So, you know, if I look at the dive right uh, sizing run, really the only thing that's changing here is the length of the shoulder pad. So, you know, if you've got uh, a little bit of growth from year to year or, or, you know, a drastic change or you're going real heavy dry suit underwear or something like that, um, you can go ahead and cheat it out just a bit to get yourself that next size. This is my first time assembling their new one. And I'll tell you what I'm noticing is the stitching um, in this little flap from this material does catch that two inch webbing a little bit. So the needle nose are really gonna become helpful there. Pretty even, looks good. So now we've got the chest strap. Just undo our buckle. Gonna look like so. You can always test to see if it's working because if you're pulling and it's gripping on nice, you know you did it the right way. And then we move into our waist assembly. So the only thing that's really changed here from the older ones is they're using a tri-glide instead of that oval stainless steel ring and then they're not giving us that real thick 
tubular webbing that's going to help protect it, protect the harness from getting rubbed up, but it's going to make it easier in the long run um, to actually get these installed nice and tight to the back plate. So we'll go ahead and do our right side assembly first. We're going to pass it through the close one and out the far one. Just give it a run through that tri glide here. So you can see, you're only going to be able to ever get it so tight because you just got a lot of thickness in that sew there. So about the best you're going to get it. So now you're going to go ahead and put on your uh, quick release side. So there's two directions. And so the way I've always done this is just pretend like it's going on myself. So if I take this one and I put it on that waistband, how is this laying on the diver versus how is this laying on the diver? So you notice with this one, it's kind of steered away from the diver's body and it's gonna fit real nice. Whereas if I went this one, it's gonna kind of dig into the diver's body a little bit right up in this area. So this is the correct buckle for this side. And getting this just a few inches off the back plate is pretty standard. Now I can go ahead and just do that D-ring by passing through the tri-glide. Passing through the other side. So I want this guy to be right in the midline of my body. So you may have to move it uh, a hair forward or a hair back. Um, it's pretty easy there. Now so our, for our belt buckle, bunch of different ways to do belt buckles. I've always preferred um, this method, so I'm going down through the big opening, up through the middle, through the last opening, so it's going to look like that. Then if I pull nice and tight, I get that slot open on the very first one that we went through. And I can just pass this through. It's now hiding on the back side. Everything is locked in crazy tight. Nothing's gonna move on us unless we want it to. And uh, you know, you can always throw some inner tubing strips to help hold this down. Show you what these guys look like. So just went and bought an old inner tube, cut it up into small little strips and uh, I always like putting these on for my customers just to try to imagine if I'm diving it, right? I want it to be nice and clean and give them the best possible outcome here. Okay. So belt buckle, you're going to want this smack dab in the center of your body. Uh, so, you know, right at the, right below the belly button. Um, you can move it again, you know, as necessary there. Just get the other side on here.
Get our shoulder assembly, make sure that's gonna clip in correctly. A few inches off the plate. Then our tri-glide. And our D-ring. And that is going to finish up our tra transplate harness. So, again, this new transplate harness, easier to assemble. Um, they're, they're pretty much doing all the work for us. This little transition guy does move more than uh, on the last generation. We still got our nice two D-rings, two bent D-rings on either shoulder. Real easy install on the sides. Now you're gonna notice we're missing a key component. Dive right doesn't supply a crotch strap with your transplate harness. So just pick up an additional crotch strap, inch, inch and a half, two inch, whichever you prefer. And, uh, and your rig's gonna be ready to go. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Hopefully this helps somebody.